In the history of humans, in the 12th century, Japan was ruled by a clan of warriors called the Heike. The nominal leader of the Heike, the emperor of Japan, was a seven-year-old boy named Antoku. His guardian was his grandmother, the Lady Nii. The Heike were engaged in a long and bloody war with another samurai clan, the Genji. Yeah. Each asserted a superior ancestral claim to the imperial throne. Their decisive encounter occurred at Danu-ura in the Japanese inland sea on April 24th in the year 1185. The Heike were badly outnumbered and outmaneuvered. With their cause clearly lost, the surviving Heike warriors threw themselves into the sea and drowned. The emperor's grandmother, the Lady Nii, resolved that they would not be captured by the enemy. What happened next is related in the tale of the Heike. The young emperor asked the Lady Nii, where are you to take me? She turned to the youthful sovereign with tears streaming down her cheeks and comforted him. Blinded with tears, the child sovereign put his beautiful small hands together. He turned first to the east to say farewell to the god of Ise, and then to the west to recite the Nembutsu, a prayer to the Amida Buddha. The Lady Nii took him in her arms and with the words, in the depths of the ocean is our capital, sank with him at last beneath the waves. The destruction of the Heike battle fleets at Dano-ura marked the end of the clan's 30-year rule. The Heike all but vanished from history. Only 43 Heike survived, all women. These former ladies-in-waiting of the imperial court were reduced to selling flowers and other favors to the fishermen near the scene of the battle. These women, and their offspring by the fisher folk, established a festival to commemorate the battle. To this day, every year, on the 24th of April, their descendants proceed to the Akama Shrine, which contains the mausoleum of the drowned seven-year-old emperor, Antoku. There, they conduct a ceremony of remembrance for the life and death of the Heike warriors. But there's a strange postscript to this story. The fishermen say that the Heike samurai wander the bottom of the inland sea still, in the form of crabs. There are crabs to be found here which have curious markings on their backs, patterns which resemble a human face with the aggressive scowl of a samurai warrior from medieval Japan. These heiki crabs, when caught, are not eaten. They're thrown back into the sea 
in commemoration of the doleful events of the Battle of Dano Ura. This legend raises a lovely problem. How does it come about that the face of a warrior is cut on the carapace of a Japanese crab? How could it be? The answer seems to be that humans made this face. But how? Like many other features, the patterns on the back or carapace of this crab are inherited. But among crabs, as among humans, there are many different hereditary lines. Now, suppose purely by chance, among the distant ancestors of this crab, there came to be one which looked just a little bit like a human face. Long before the battle, fishermen may have been reluctant to eat a crab with a human face. In throwing it back into the sea, they were setting into motion a process of selection. If you're a crab, and your carapace is just ordinary, the humans are gonna eat you. But if it looks a little bit like a face, they'll throw you back and you'll be able to have lots of nice little baby crabs that all look just like you. As many generations passed of crabs and fisher folk alike, the crabs with patterns that look most like a samurai face preferentially survived until eventually, there was produced not just a human face, not just a Japanese face, but the face of a samurai warrior. All this has nothing to do with what the crabs might want. Selection is imposed from the outside. The more you look like a samurai, the better your chances of survival. Eventually, there are a lot of crabs that look like samurai warriors.